a Cards with Michael production. What's up, YouTube? Cards with Michael, we're back. Uh, another Japanese Zenikar set booster. These are pretty fun to open, so we're going to keep doing them. I finally did get my English allocation today, but we'll keep going with the Japanese. Scott, you're the sponsor today. Thank you so much for the trust. And uh, let's get to it. All right, digging my finger in here, cracking this box open. Um, I will say these set boosters, I'm not a big fan of how they've uh, how they decided to um, uh, I guess package these. I don't think these are that sturdy. Uh, this box happens to not be too bad, but they're they're kind of flimsy. Um, okay, all right. And uh, someone did comment that the box upper felt a little folded or a little pringly. Uh, the topper is a little like that for sure, the last one, uh, but the card itself wasn't too bad. Um, it was uh, something that we were able to salvage pretty quickly. Um, so just wanted to address that in the, com saw that in the comments. And please, you know, do mention that kind of stuff if I, if I kind of miss it uh, or whatever. <laughs> I am happy, happy to address that kind of stuff. All right, so let's go ahead, get to it, and open some set boosters. Uh, these are... Uh, just so interesting how you know like the list is English uh, the token is Japanese the art card has Japanese text and of course uh, the expedition is Japanese so uh, just some of those cool little things oh my goodness okay so here we go <laughs> and like again once I, uh, once again the card the art card is in Japanese that is just a cool little thing um, and I think we'll we'll do some piles we'll have the land um, and the comments and uncommons are really just you know, you've seen a lot of these comments by now if you've drafted, so they're not they're not anything to walk away or talk about too much. Uh, so we'll kind of just put them to the side. And, you know, there's like the welcome chapter and all that nonsense, but <laughs> I think we just kind of want to see the hits and whether or not we get cards, cool cards from the list. And I think, you know, that's what you guys want. That's what I want to provide. All right, here we go. We got our foil, guaranteed a foil. And I think this is one of the beautiful comments in the, in the set. Um... But, you know, not too spicy of a card. And our token. Alright. So, on to the next pack. A pack was decent. We did get a Mythic. And a Foil. And here we go. We have our art card. Alright. Beautiful art card. Just beautiful. And it's, it's very unlikely. I think each one of these should just have a Foil straight up. Uh, land. Uh, but, you know. I not Wizards. They do whatever they want. Here we have more Japanese commons on commons, aka the draft chaff. Beautiful art, of course. Um, and our first rare. Guaranteed rare. And oh nice. We also have a foil rare. Alright. Okay. Nice little hits. Whoa. Wow, that's actually a really sweet card from the list, Scott. I mean, this is definitely one of the better hits, packed in negation. No idea how much this is worth, but ding, that's that's nice. And I think if I do add prices, I'm on the fence about if I should be adding prices or not. I think I might just add prices to the cards on the list because those are things that you guys are curious about. Um, I might add the price of the list card and the price of the non-list, like the original. Um, just because I've noticed that the cards on the list are a little bit higher and not maybe not exactly accurate. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're accurate because people are buying because they're like, oh, that's a cool card. Like... Is this cooler than the original um, pack negation? Or I guess this one is from Masters 25. Is it cooler than that? I don't know. But super sweet that we did pull it. Can you imagine if it was a Japanese in Japanese? I think that actually might make it worth a little bit more. But, you know, alas. And I noticed there actually isn't too many of these. Uh, the, what are these called? The, the play cards. The how to play game cards. So, oh, you know what? This is... Uh, I guess they're not really that miss off center or anything. Anyways, on to the next. Oh, I love this Celestial Colonnade. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's the expedition. All right. Got our commons and uncommons. That one's a little faded, I feel. And our first rare, Grakma, and a foil. All right, some of these just that's how it goes. Um, I am surprised though. Like the list cards are another example of feast and famine. Like wow, we hit we hit pack negation. That's actually worth monies. Uh, we also could hit 
I don't know. I still remember Anoint a Priest from our first box opening. That was such a feels bad. Such a feels bad. I cannot believe that is card on the list. Like, why? Why, Wizards? Why, Watsy? Why? I, I will say another thing, though. Um, the fact that these are guaranteed a jet. Ooh, look at that. That's a Wasteland art card. All right. All right. Ah, oh, beautiful. I will say that because um, these are a way to get Japanese expeditions. I think they're actually, like, box price. Like, they're actually decent. Like, the, the booster boxes of these are, are a little bit hard to find right now, actually. At least for me. And you guys... Ooh. <laughs> I should have known that it was an art card. Got a foil Japanese cleansing wildfire. That might be worth something. All right. So here we have a Cadaverous Knight. It has flanking. It's from Mirage. Um... Uh, flanking and it also has regenerate so well, that's pretty cool blast from the pass all right second card from the list and yeah i was trying to prevent you guys from seeing that there would be a list card but honestly it's probably not worth it oh that's such a beautiful and that's actually no that's not this is pillar verge the, the play mat of the day is a uh, uh, bright climb pathway got another foil so i guess actually we should put the foil uh, basic lands to a separate pile because I think they might be worth something like a couple bucks maybe maybe not a lot but a couple bucks um, I will say that there's only two boxes left of these to sponsor um, so if you were on the fence just keep that in mind um, the demand for these is a little bit higher than I thought and I did reach out to my distributors and they're like there are no more <laughs> you want more sorry there are no more uh, so uh, you know I don't want to build foam or anything I, I don't mind uh, selling out of every single box I have, but I only have two left. Here we go. We have another cool card. All right. That's actually kind of creepy. I didn't realize that's what it looked like uh, <laughs> in the art. The Umara, whatever, the, the one that gets plus two plus zero so whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard. Another Grakmos guy, Clave, uh, Ravager, and a Inscription of Abundance. All right. And a Foil Squid. The card has been doing work over time in of course limited it's one of the reasons why blue is actually very very strong you get a you get a two mana three two a common all right here we go we have another a rogue very cool and pack beast does a lot of work an unsung hero an unsung hero of the limited format and the cacophony all right and that's pretty cool too the the sorcery speed hero that um, the lands unfortunately do come into play tapped. All right, in Japanese though. All right, on to the next. On to the next. So uh, I've been wondering these days. I, I've been thinking like, what could they have done to make set boosters like actually super attainable? Um, and honestly, every single thing I think of. Oh, this is island by the way. It's kind of gorgeous. Uh, is unfortunately just like another like it would make set boosters more uh, attainable but but i don't know if that's the point i don't know if it's the point of these is to be like super value like collector boosters because my concern is collector boosters as you know go through this cycle where there's super high demand for it and then once that ev kind of wears off the demand starts petering out um, I don't think they want that. I think that they want people to have these set boosters as an affordable option to, you know, scratching that pack itch, pack cracking itch. Um, and they don't want this these to ever be like not available, if that makes sense. And I think the price of that is that they are a little bit less value, uh, but ideally they should be also priced at a little bit lower than what you would expect. So something like, for example, we are now, ooh, we got an Omnath art card. I love it. Um, my sale price for these sealed is 125, including shipping. Um, and it scales down to about 120 if you do buy multiple. Um, and I think that even that's a little bit high, but I, I am like able to, you know, sleep happily with those prices. And one of the things is, I think that was kind of the intention, the intention where, okay, the next card's gonna be a, a list card. Let's, whoa, we got a Dryad Arbor. All right, from Future Sight. That actually is not bad. Oh, we're, okay, we're definitely going to add prices. I think we're going to go with the price of the actual, like, this card. If it weren't a, uh, if it weren't the, uh, the Planeswalker symbol. Because this is actually pretty cool, I think. Well, actually, it could be completely off-base. Dryad Arbor could be worthless. But I think it's 
cool. I think it's a really cool pull. Now, what was I saying? Okay, so I think set boosters, well, yeah, they, they shouldn't be really expensive. Um, so I'm okay and happy putting them at the price I'm putting them at. And I think that, you know, Wizards kind of intends on these to be these affordable, like a few bucks. Oh my God, it's so cool. It's Jace. A few bucks more valuable than um, uh, than booster boxes. And then you, you like always have the option of paying like 100 or 105, which I think is more reasonable for the price of these. Or maybe like 110. Uh, when the print the print runs actually start getting real, um, put a little foil fire legac and uh, and yeah and then like that that's and you just like you basically just have a, have to make a decision between buying this or a booster box if you have the same amount of money, um, but you know that's not the case yet obviously, and that's how I evaluate these and I, that and you know that's why you don't really see me complaining or bashing this product as much. Um, because these were supposed to be an affordable alternative to booster boxes for all you guys at home who don't have the playing time. Well, that's triple rare box. Nice. Who don't have the, um, you know, the play group to do draft, uh, but still want to open packs. And then maybe like collector packs are a little bit outside of your budget, right? Like all of these reasons are why I think this, this the concept was actually really good. Now, you know, the execution has been like, you know, there, there's ways to improve it. Okay. And, and I was talking about that. Like, I'm worried that, like, the things that I think about will just basically make these, like, everything I think about makes these closer and closer to collector boosters, which these are not supposed to be. And, um, honestly, I, ooh, we have an Ancient Craving. All right, I know that's not an like, extremely valuable card, but still, another card from the list. Um, I will say that even though these are not expensive, um... Like, what was my train thought? Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. Question marks everywhere. I, I can't exactly remember. Oh, man, the art card's so sweet. Why? I love these art cards. Uh, Okay, I, I, I lost my train of thought, so I might just comment in the in the YouTubes on what I was talking about to finish that train of thought, and you can just look in the comments. I'll rewatch this. All right, got a foil rare here. We got the the mower because he cuts the grass. And what do we have after that? It's our second foil rare. Um Dang, it really <laughs> it bothers me that I completely forgot what I was talking about because we got that list card that we should have known. It was kind of telegraphed. Hey, we got the same uh art card. So far, no art cards with the signature, or I guess the stamp is what you're calling them. I I don't really don't really know. All right, um, got our second mythic, Lithoform Engine. It's in Japanese, so it's a nice little pull. All right, all right. All right, and here we have Foil Common, okay. All right, on to the next pack. We have a Murkwater Pathway, all right. And here we go. Got our rare. Is it another Kiri and a foily boy? All right. On to the next. I am starting to realize that uh, the Japanese expeditions do command a premium. I've been looking at how. Oh God, how do you pronounce it? Um, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, and yeah, it's not. It's not too much of a surprise. Like a foil misty rainforest is is worth more in Japanese than than English. Um, oh, we got another mythic, Forsaken Monument. Uh, but it's more of a, f ooh, that's a cool card. Goblin Lore. How do I forget that, that the back is a magic card? All right. Yeah, we'll see this up. It, it is, of course, played in that. Um, this spiked, actually, when it was seeing play in uh, the cycling discard deck. Uh, what was that card called? That that 4-4, four, four, five, cost five mana. Oh, man, I don't remember what it was called. Anyways. Um, yeah, okay, here. I'm going to start notating this. Look, it's a token. There's no list card here. So no no surprise Pikachu here. Um, this is just a forest, but beautiful art. Oh, my gosh. Is this the same forest? That's so cool. Let's use that more often. All right, we have our comments and uncommons. Oh, is it creepy? Yeah, he kind of looks like a vampire, doesn't he? Doesn't it look like a blue-red wizard. And the croc. All right. Tabarax again. All right. We have seen that. <laughs> oh, man. A foil fearless fledgling. All right. OK. 
Okay, and we'll keep going. Oh man, do we get another signed art card at all? I mean, is it possible? I guess it is possible that the whole box might not have a single one. Um, that would be sad. That would be sad for sure. Here we go. Boop -boop. Got a Lotus Cobra in Japanese, all right. And Chilling Grasp. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Wait! Food Chain? Oh my gosh! Holy, wait, I think this is the valuable card, right? I wasn't prepared for this. Hold it, uh, wait, dude, what? Food Chain. I'm, I'm, guys, Food Chain MTG TCG player. Was this the valuable card? Oh my gosh, Scott, we did it! I, all I was thinking about was Skull Rack, but I totally forgot about Food Chain. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Originally printed in Mercedes Mask, of course, it is used in combo decks, right? With a, a few key creatures that can be cast from the Exile Zone. So that's Miss Hollow Griffin and uh, some other Eldrazi. Oh my goodness! All right! Okay, okay. Oh. That's so sweet. Wow, we're doing so well on the... Uh, we're definitely going to price just the list card. Just out of curiosity. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. I, okay, whatever I was talking about, I totally forgot now. Now I've really, really lost my train of thought. But I'm excited. Toy Bowl Island in Japanese. Okay. Hey, and we got a Japanese Kenyan Derby. Oh man, that's that's super nice. No, oh, I love it. There we go. There we go. Got another pathway here. This is Clearwater and Murkwater. All right, and a foil rare maddening cacophony. So what was I talking about? Okay, I was talking about a while ago about set boosters and affordability, and um, you know, just that Wizards has made a product that that people are evaluating as if it's one hundred and fifty dollars, which is fair, completely fair, because that's what TCG player says. It's one hundred and forty-five on TCG player. However, you know, like if you try to think about what the intention was. The intention was for these to be like the hundred dollar product, because um, you know the prices that wizard like that 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 stores pay distributors for these is like just a few dollars more expensive than booster boxes. So if you are used to paying a hundred for a booster box and you paid just a few more dollars for one of these, um, and you can open like cool cards like food chain, like I think that's worth it. I truly think that's worth it. Oh, this is a pretty off center forest. Eh, I wouldn't say pretty off center, but definitely off center, you know. Um, and uh, and I, you know, that's why I was really excited about this product uh, at first. And now it's a little tempered because I, I do, I do. <laughs> what the heck is this? Bouncing Shore Shark from Ikoria. All right, well, welcome back, welcome back, Mister Shore Shark. Um, I do recognize and and, and see and hear. I, I do see other content creators bashing this product. I see YouTubers and, and uh, people on Reddit saying that this is not worth it. It's not a good product. And look, like I, I see where you're coming from, uh, but I'm not going to discourage wizards from, I guess the whole th print sheet is a little off center. I'm not gonna discourage wizards from trying new things, right? We're in 2020, all right? The game's been around for a long time. I want them to try new things, even if they fail, as long as you know we're able to learn something from those failings now. Don't get me talk, talking about Secret Lair. That's something different. Here we go. This is such a beautiful foiling. Look at that card. Oh man, let's look at the other side. Yep, just as gorgeous. Oh man, all right. Um, now, Zendikar set, boosters. Uh, I, ha I still have not come up with my like overall grade for them yet, but I will say this box opening has been truly, really exciting. I mean like, Food chain, look at that. Like, that's just so nice. Like, you know, like, you don't get that kind of cards anymore. I, I think that, you know, once we get these set boosters just tweaked a little bit, you don't need too much work to tweak it. Um, they can really be a real thing. Now, the problem is if, you know, you were always guaranteed like a food chain or whatever, first of all, food chain's price would go down enough to make it so that you wouldn't be quote unquote making your money back. And or second of all, people would, you know, what's the term that we use now? It's like scalp all of the boxes or just the secondary market would eat it up before, you know, you and I who want to just open one of these for fun, uh, make some YouTube content on it, can even obtain one. So 
just think about those things. You know, the product can be good, but like if the value is too good, you know, economics will secondary markets will move to make those adjustments. All right. We still have not got a signed art card. I'm now growing worried. Where is our signed art card? All right. Okay, here's our first rare. Akiri and Zerasan, both in the initial trailer with uh, with Nahiri. All right, I love the foiling on this card. So amazing. And such a good component of the white-black lifelink deck. Like, at two drop, early game, it's a bear with slight upside. Hey, speaking of which, it's like the packs hurt us. We do like this card. We do like the art. And it is embossed signature with a little bit of texture. If you feel it, can you tell that there's a little bit of texture? But not, you know, not anything to write home about. So Scott Murphy. Sweet art card. And, um, yeah, and then, like, late game, it's a two-mana potential lava axe almost. Like, right? Drain four if you have a full party. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby. Showcase rare here. All right, and a foil. Gosh, the foiling on these is much better than like the US ones, I feel. Even though they're made in the US. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we have another list card, Spring Jack Shepherd. We've had some big winners and uh, some, you know, okay cards. <laughs> or, I mean, that one's straight, straight bulk. Like, I, I shouldn't even say it's okay. But, you know, we had, we got the goods. We got the goods. All right, and here we are. Hey, that might be something valuable. It is a pathway, a branch loft pathway, and my favorite. Oh, a boulder loft pathway in Japanese. So cool. <laughs> All right, and the last pack is, um, sorry, that's not, that's the last pack, but the last uh, thing we're opening is this Japanese expedition. And let's get to it. Actually, out of curiosity, okay, even this is made in the USA. Do you see that? So, okay, I mean, what is actually not made in the USA? And yet, like, these are not obtainable in the USA, basically. Like, it's hard to get them. Like, what, what is up with that? All right, here we go. Here we go. Boom! A wasteland in Japanese, all right? Something. We got, we, not a fetch land, but still something. Okay, friends, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, something that I will do a more formal announcement for is I did start a Patreon today um, and there's some tiers and there's some cool things and I'll put the link to it. Um, and I'll do a more dedicated video later, but I just wanted to mention it in case that's the type of stuff you are interested in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see more, if you want to sponsor, we got two more left. As of this video, we might sell out soon. Um, but yeah, that's it. Let's do a quick count. Uh, but if you guys are done with the video, Feel free to leave, but otherwise, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, thirty-two non-foil rares. Thirty-three foil rares. Four mythics. And how many list cards? Let's see. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Some pretty sweet list cards too. Okay, so everything is about average, and that's the that's the video. Have a great day, guys.